Hi, this is Les Levine, the self-proclaimed voice of truth and reason in Ohio sports. It's warm outside. Hoinsey is here. The Browns are 5-7, and seven, so let's talk tribe baseball. I've thought and overthought what the Indians should try to do in this offseason. I realize you really have an opportunity to use a top-five player as trade bait, but essentially that's what they have going for them in this offseason. I've decided what they should do. The Twins and the White Sox will be the ones making a run for the AL Central in addition to the Indians, but their offenses are better than the Tribes, but their pitching isn't close. Give yourself a target like July 1st and see where you stand with Francisco Lindor. Unless they are out of it by that time, they owe the fans one more shot at a pennant. The fans understand the Lindor stakes. They don't like it, but they understand. After making a run for it in 2020, then I guess the Indians can await for offers, which won't be as good as they would be right now. Then let's go see how good the front office really is at rebuilding a team. What the heck? It's not my money. Hoinsey is here. Paul Hoynes, more sports and less Levine is on the air. From the worldwide headquarters of More Sports and Less Levine, it's a Thursday night. Good evening, everyone. Welcome once again to More Sports and Less Levine into our 24th consecutive year and seen exclusively on Cleveland.com. Look at this guy, Hoinsey. <laughs> Paul Hoins is here. It's beach weather time for him. He's going to San Diego to follow the, uh, the uh, tribe front office as the winter meetings get underway. Welcome back, Hoinsey. It's good to be back, Les. Yeah. All right. So, what do you? Who's got the? Uh, you and I, we ought to have a vote on the on the beards. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you, you, yours looks better than it mine. It looks better. Well, I <laughs> yeah. haven't had it that long. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three is the number to call. You can email us at uh, reallesslevine at gmail dot com. All right. You heard what I had to say in the voice yeah. of truth and reason. Agree? Disagree? Partly? What do you think? No, I agree with you. Uh, I think. Uh, I don't think you trade him now. I think this is the, like we. I, I think this is the best time to trade him. Obviously, you get the biggest return right, right now. Every day that goes by, it's less and right. less. Right, but I think that I think they can still win the division next year. I think they can still contend, and if not win the division, at least contend for a wild card. So I think. The best way to do that is with Lindor at, at, at shortstop. And then if you're in the tank in July, then you can, uh, you know, recalibrate and, and, and go in a different direction. But I think, like you said, I agree with you. Give it one more shot. Right. Try to win this division. All right, so in, in, in the situation here as, as we have it, you've got – remember last year everybody kept saying, well, they were beating Detroit and they were beating Kansas City and all that stuff. Well, it works two ways. You can not only beat them for the division title, but you should, you're playing them 19 times. You should rack up some wins for the wild card. And has been proven 100 times, just get there and, and anybody can win. Yeah, I mean, we saw it with Washington this yeah. year. They won the same amount of games as the Indians did. Obviously, 93 wins. But, you know, it's a little different in the National League than in the American League. But, but. All right, So you wrote the other day, you wrote some names – I don't know how what the fans know and don't know about some of those names. Who stands out to you? What team stands out to you? Uh, for a, a trade for, for trading Lindo, partner, yeah. For, yeah, you know, I think there's, I think you know, the the field is kind of limited. I, I would think, you know, if if uh, if you're going to trade for Lindor, I think if you trade for him now, you know, I think you 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 get him for two years, but you'd also like to maybe explore an extension. Maybe a team like the Yankees could could do that. Or you know that you always hear the Dodgers, you know that that they're you know one of the the teams that are um, you know have shown interest in in Lindor going back to last year. Um, I don't know if the Angels, you know, uh, they've got a pretty good shortstop, but he's he's coming up on free agency, Simmons. So I don't, you know, but it would have to be a big market team, I, I think. Speaking of that, am I right that the Dodgers haven't won since '88? 88 was, yeah, their last World Series. Isn't that but hard? They, they win the division every yeah, year. Yeah, I know. But isn't that hard to believe that that team in the, that division, an easy division for the most part, although San Francisco came out and won three times, Yeah, um, doesn't it surprise you? It does surprise me. But they had, they had some really tough ownership problems. 
Oh, in, in Dodgers? Uh, yeah, the Dodgers. Now they've got a good group that owns the club and is going to spend money, and they've got a huge TV contract. And the guy that's, that's Andrew Friedman, who's running mm-hmm. the uh, Dodgers now, you know, c- came from Tampa Bay, and they really, you know, he's kind of running the Dodgers like he he's run the uh, the ran the Rays. They're not. They don't overspend a lot. They they don't trade their prospects. Uh, and what, they, what's their theory? The same thing. They're going to win the division most probably, and. Worry about it then? Yeah, and, and I think right now they are in position to, to spend. They could trade some prospects. They have a loaded farm system, and and they're making, you know, they lead the lead. They've led baseball in attendance. So, I mean, they've got money. They've got a lot of money, and uh, they could they could make something happen this I winter. was reading USA Today <clears throat> today, and they didn't even, they're talking about the winter meetings coming up, and they're naming names, and they didn't even mention Francisco Lindor's name in there. Yeah. So maybe it's not as big because it's us in Cleveland. We think about it and worry about every little thing. It's not on a national baseball scene. It doesn't seem to be that big a deal right now. Well, you know, I think, uh, you know, I think it. You know, I, I've read some stories where you know, I've, I've, you know, there's been some speculation in from Kenny Rosenthal and uh, you know Jeff Passan that you know they're they're still you know they they've. The Indians are in a spot where it's inevitable. They're going to have to trade sure. them one, and it's like we, we've been talking about. You got to pick your spot now. But uh, I think it's still. I think when you hear those, you know, the big, the players that that could get traded. You know, Bryant. You know, Lindor is always right there. I, Chris I, Bryant. Yeah, with, with the Cubs, and you know the the different players that could get moved. I think uh, you know he is always. I think he's right there. I mean, he's the guy that. Kind of would move the needle, obviously, if, right. you, if you make a deal. But I just don't think it's going to happen this winter. Is he, is he a top five player in the big leagues right now? Considering the position he plays, how well he plays it, hits for average, hits for home power. Yeah, I would think so. You know, I think uh, his WAR wasn't that great. I mean, I think he had a four five four eight, but I think, but. Uh, you know, as as far as top five player, you know, Chapman and those guys, and and and, and Trout, and I think he's yeah, top five, well, let's, top let's ten leave at the least. Pitch, let's leave pitchers out. So maybe you're talking top five there. Yeah. Is, is Bryce Harper? Did he play himself out of the top five, or you, or would you, if you're stacking guys up, would you still have him there? I don't know if he's a top five for me. I I think. Uh, How did he turn that into so much money? He swings and misses a lot, but I think he's, you know, he, he did put some good years together in, in Washington. Uh, he's, you know, he's got a, he's got, he's got a brand, he's got a name, he's, you know, and uh, I think he's, you know, if he's, he's right there, he's still an elite player. Okay, so let me throw a couple of things at you here. If, do they know where they, do the Indians know where they want Ramirez to play, or does it depend on if they can get a third baseman or a second baseman, and then that determines where he goes. Yeah, I think they're still in that, you know, kind of in that that boat right now. Um, he has told them before that he'd he'd rather play third base, but you know, this winter, I mean, at their exit meetings this year, at the end of last season, he said, "Yeah, look, look I'll go to second or third. I just want one position, though. Don't be bouncing me back and forth." I think uh, you know, there's one school of thought that says. Okay, play him at second base because you got Nolan Jones coming to play right. third next year. The next following year, year, yeah, not this year, but he's at least two years away, right. I would think. All right, uh, Carlos Carrasco. Assuming the doctors can perform miracles as they so far have, is he in your bullpen or is he in your rotation? You know, you know, the last time I talked to Chris Antonetti, he said they're they have they're going into spring training with the idea of him starting. Now, it wouldn't surprise me if he ends up in the bullpen. I mean, I guess physically, you know, it, it just depends on, on the workload he can carry and how, he re, how his treatment is going this winter. I'm surprised, I'm surprised he would have come up with that answer. I would have thought he would say, well, we're going to go into spring training with no expectations at all, and if we get him for this, great, and if we get him for that, great. Do you, isn't that the answer you would expect? Well, I think, you know, I think you're also, you know, Carrasco wants to start. He doesn't okay. want to pitch out of the bullpen. So they want to help him too. Yeah, I think. I think they. Yeah, I think you know. I don't think you you want to upset him. You know, after what he's gone through, and I, and I don't think you want to put a boundary on him. You know. 
No, but what they did with him this past year was probably the right way to handle it. Oh, yeah. I, I, I mean, even perfect. if he wanted starting pitching, yeah. he was not Because he was it. still talking about, you know, start a relief. You know, Carlos was thinking he could still start a relief. You know, he was going back and forth. But I think, yeah, obviously this was the best way to do it. This, and it, it made it easier for him to come back. If, if he was starting, right. I don't right. think he makes it back. All right, we, we want to send you off on your trip in a nice, calm way here. So I'm going to... Hey, ask you for your impressions or I know you don't do impressions but your thoughts on what's going on with Freddie Kitchen the Browns Odell Beckham uh, somebody told me and I don't know who it is said you were the best football uh, writer the city's oh, ever seen no, oh my God. how many years did you with the uh, with, did you cover the Browns I covered the Browns uh, I covered the Browns for about three or four years for the News Herald right and, and then I went to the press I went to the press in uh, I think after Red Right 88. I covered them for two years or, or until they folded, the press folded. And then I went back, uh, covered the, Then I, God, I was bouncing all over. But then I, that's when I st went to the News Herald and back to the News Herald and started uh, covering the Indians. Well, I forget who told me. It might have been the name I gave you during the, uh, before we started. I'll, I'll search my mind here, which doesn't, <laughs> won't take long, I can tell you that. 216 575 Hoinsey is here if you'd like. You can, he, he'll cover football if you'd like, but we'll talk some baseball here tonight. The winter meeting's getting underway. Expect it to be a lot of action? There hasn't been the last couple of years. Yeah, it's, it's so crazy, you know. There's a lot of stuff happening right now, you know, some free agent signing, right. some trades, and that's what usually happens, and that usually means nothing happens at the meetings, you know. But there can't be... Sets you, the stage. Yeah, but and then, you know, you set the stage, you get... But you know, I don't see the big, the big free agents like Cole and Strasburg signing at, at the winter meetings. I don't see that happening. Um, but you know that because Boros is, has controls those guys. He controls has those everything. guys, and uh, so. But I think there's still, you know, I think the, the market is a little looser this year than the last so two. Maybe. So there should be some action. All right. If you start your rant right now, you only have 47 minutes to, <laughs> to do it. <laughs> Two one six five seven five zero four zero three. Here's the stat of the month. Did you know over three million dollars were paid? It was paid out by the Ohio Lottery scratch offs every day. That's unbelievable. Give the give the uh, gift of winning this month with the popular Ohio Lottery scratch offs like Holiday Cash, Holiday Lucky Times Ten, and Merry Millions, all from the Ohio Lottery. You can follow us on Facebook at facebook.com/slash More Sports and Less Levine with new content posted. Each and every day, we'll read some responses to our question of the day a little bit later. Paul Hines with us. More sports and less Levine continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. Prescott Downs and Casino now has sports betting. Use one of the 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet. Then watch your favorite games on our new HD televisions or visit our new sportsbook area. Only at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. As a kid growing up, my dream was to go to college, play baseball, and get a degree. Coming out of high school, I had two choices. I was accepted into a four-year university, but I decided to come to Tri-C after receiving a scholarship. I got my associate's degree at Tri-C. They transferred all my credits straight into Baldwin Wallace, so I started at Baldwin Wallace University as a junior. My name is Tyler Leonard, and I earned my first degree at Tri-C. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. Birthdays uh, for today, December 5th. This is a good birthday date. John Wooden, one of the all-time great uh, coaches who um, had the $100 handshake. Well, he didn't, but his, some of his... Uh, boosters did. Some of his boosters allegedly yeah. did. And it was a 
Tall handshake for uh, Lou Alcindor. Oh, you need a stool. <laughs> <You> need, <laughs> get on top of that locker. Jim Plunkett, uh, Terry Cloth, 1947, Art Monk, oh, oh. Justin Smokin, Christian Yelich, Yelich uh, MVP, right? Yeah, oh yeah. Could have been this year Could again. Could have been this year, great player. 216-575-0403 is the number. Our Facebook question of the day, what would I change, or, or what change would you like to see the Indians make this uh, season? Let's uh, check it out, see what people have to say. Larry Pantages, who was the sports editor of the Beacon Journal for a while, uh, he says, go back to the John Hart philosophy of a power hitter at every, at every position. The stitches are tighter on the ball, meaning banjo swingers can get big numbers. Angelo Legrande, remember oh, Hal oh, Evans' God. favorite phenom? And Carl Pagel and Tommy Hinzo. Tommy they were just Hinzo. born too soon. Uh, let me finish up on this. I want to go back to that. Tim Gerhardt says, outfield, they need to sign a player with power. Gerard Morelli says a new owner would be nice. John Swit, an ownership who is not playing in a no-limit poker game with $10 in his pocket. <laughs> oh, I'd like to boy. see that guy turn something you into know. a fortune. <laughs> Let's see. So when did you started at the Plain Dealer when? Uh, 83, 84? 83. Okay. Right after the 82 season. People who remember Indians baseball back there, uh, Hal, Hal Lebowitz had his favorite guy, Angelo Lagrande who I believe played football at Notre Dame. Is that possible? Boy, I don't know. Somebody did. Do you, were you, when would Lagrande have been around? He was Before he, you or after he, you? Just before me. He was uh, what he kind of Joe, Joe Di, DiMaggio, kind of similar. He was a fisherman's sit right. kind of kid and you know, worked, on, worked hit, in the hit boats. 700, 700 feet home runs in yeah, the spring yeah. training. Right. Did right. you ever see him play? I did never. I never saw him play. He was gone before when I started that covering. Was, that the, was Hal's the pet project. Did you ever have a guy like that? Some guy you saw and said, "This guy just cannot miss," and he did. <laughs> Not, I mean, I'm trying to think. Uh, you just take what it, what what's out there is out there. Yeah, I, I I never saw a guy that I thought you know was a can't miss player. Uh, I thought, uh, oh boy. No, I never did. I never so did. Tommy Hinza was a. I remember him as a light hitting second baseman. Yeah. I don't remember him as a. Well, yeah, he home swung for. Guy. He swung. He swung hard. Swing. <laughs> he ran hard too. <laughs> he was. A, he's the only guy I ever saw get taken out of a game because somebody from the from the press box, the front office, called down and told. Uh, this is when Hart was managing the yeah. team. Told me to get him out of there. Which, it, which means he was going to be traded? Well, no, that he was playing poorly. Oh. <laughs> he had made like three errors at second base. Oh. And they so Hart calls him in a spring training game? No, this oh, is a big league game. game and Hart, that's when Hart kind of took over as manager right. late in the year. And uh, Tommy uh, didn't have a good game, and they took him out. Has anybody looked worse in a baseball uniform than John Hart oh. as manager of the Indians? And, and nothing personal. <laughs> well, I guess it is personal. I mean, he was tremendous for the franchise and general manager and all that stuff. He just did not look right as 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 a ball, as a player. Yeah, he he was. I think that's that was his ma that was his dream job, but to be he, manager. Yeah, I yeah think he, he did he did well enough the yeah, other way. He, but his, his true calling was as a general manager. Yeah. He did when, a great job. When he was general manager in the the, the great years, of the uh, early '90s, did did you get? Was there a, a deal that he made where you just said, you know, I'm not going to question this guy again. It, the, this thing looks like it's going to work. He's got a great eye for talent, or did you keep reins on him all the time? You know, I thought uh, I thought he was the master of like the the small deal. You know, like Lofton. No one had ever heard of Lofton right. when he got him. Right. And. Uh, and uh, like Paul Sorrento, I remember we were in Yuma, Arizona, when he got Paul Sorrento. And I said, Paul, what, what do they need him for? And and like Felix Fermin, even Felix Fermin, who was a darn good shortstop, you know, he got him and kind of pulled him out of the hat when they needed a, sh uh, a shortstop. And he was really good as a scout. He was, you know, he, Jim Ingram wrote the book on with uh, Mike Hargrove. Right, I read He's, that. He yeah. said, I haven't quite finished it, but what I got is that he. He thought that Hargrove's favorite player in all that decade, says, was uh, Paul Sorrento. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, he was. I mean, Sorrento, ninth was, batter, eighth yeah, batter. Yeah, and you know he's hitting 20, 25 home <laughs> right. runs a year. In those with, days, that's a lot. Yeah, along along with Tommy and Manny are probably hitting yeah. sixth and seventh in that lineup. How how much fun was that covering them as a baseball team? Uh, which, if they had won a World Series, I think would have gone down as one of the great teams of all time. How much fun was it covering them going up against the fact that 
interesting stuff going off the field, mostly around Albert Bell. Yeah. It was it was it was a blast. I remember Sorrento. You bring him up, you know when when. Uh, when Grimsley went through the through yeah, the uh, to, upper, get Albert's bat. To, to get Albert's bat and dropped into the umpire's room, he left the Sorrento bat in there <laughs> because he had to because all of Albert's other bats were cork. They were all cork, so he's going to get caught. And so I, I remember walking up to uh, Sorrento the next day in, in in Chicago during BP, and I asked him about what was your bat doing in there, and he goes like the best uh, Sergeant Schultz uh, <laughs> imitation I've ever heard. He goes, "I know nothing." <laughs> <laughs> How did? Did Grimsley take that upon himself to do? I think or did, he was or did he, he was helped. <laughs> he, but Grimsley was crazy, so he went through the up the tiles. But he how did few, he know which one was the umpire's room? I think they marked it off. They marked it. They went outside because the the, the, the concourse, you know, could, you could walk from one locker room to the other locker room. Okay. And so they they stepped it off, <laughs> and then they went through the ceiling. Gee, these guys are geniuses. <laughs> I know. But he fell through a couple times in a couple different rooms, too. So yeah. It's like that ESPN commercial with the, their, the Russian hockey players. They're stealing stuff from the uh, from the uh, one of the rooms, and the guy's falling through all the time. <laughs> that had to be great because you had no idea you were going to see something almost every night that you've never seen before. Yeah, you know, I, I remember like Buddy Bell said, those that team liked to play from behind. You know, they, they liked it when they got got down. Because, it was a challenge? Yeah, it got, a, it got them into the game. You right. know. Well, I, it seems to me that would have been a fun team to, to cover, to play with, to, to do anything, and unfortunately they, ne they never won it. Yeah, but, I mean, you had so many – Dennis Martinez, you could get a different story from Dennis Martinez every day. He either he loved this guy, he hated this guy, and he would say anything. I mean, he, he was the best. All right, so we talked about, you know, uh, people emailing in what they'd like the Indians to do. What, what does Paul Hines want them to do or think they should do? Well, obviously they have to get an infielder. I, I, uh, you know, to play second or third base, you know, I don't think that's going to be that, that tough to do. Either you tr trade for somebody or, or – you know, that's lot, easier than a power hitting outfielder. Yeah, I think there's because there's a lot of infielders out there. I mean, if that makes sense, Brock Holt, uh, Estrubal Cabrera, you know, um, uh, Yalmer Sanchez, a guy that the, the White Sox and just non tendered. So there's a lot of guys if they if they really need want to go in that direction. You could either even Travis Shaw could play third base. I don't know. He's not that good with the glove, but he's hit a lot of home runs. He had a terrible year with the Brewers. I don't know how much it would cost you. But, right. but I mean, the, the, they can wait that out, I think. What they, to me, what they need, they need an, an outfielder that plays every day, a corner outfielder that plays every day. Mercado is going to – I think he can play center every day. But they need somebody with some power – like, a, you know, if, if let's say they, they if they kept Puig, you know, that's the kind of guy, I, if you can balance his off the field well, stuff. I, I was going to ask that. Where do they stand on him or where does he stand on them? Because I know he's not getting he's not getting 20 million from anybody. No. A year. And it's, it's so I think, you know, the clock is working with the Indians on that one. I You know, I, I have a feeling, a gut feeling they wouldn't bring him back. But it'd be great to have somebody like that, like, uh, you know, like. Just an, like a Brantley, you know, a, a guy that can play every day at, at one of the corners, and then you don't, you can stop the rot, you know, rotate. I mean, platoon in all three, all three positions. You just wonder, on, on Puig, when I like what I saw for the most part, but you wonder if he signs a contract three, four years. Yeah. Does, what is he going to give you? Is he going to become a trouble guy? Yeah, that's because that's what the word was on him. Right. I mean, and he was, you know, he he was on his best behavior, like we've we talked about right. before. They had him for two a two month trial, so. You know, well, they they saw what they were going to get, but that there was more to him than what they saw. Yeah, and and and, and he didn't hit for power. That was a surprising yeah. thing. He only hit two home runs here. He, he looked he like hit, he was going to crank one every time up. And and. And I think uh, he had what twenty twenty two with the with yeah. the Reds. Yeah. So and that was a that's a easier park to hit in. All right. Obviously. Let me let me go back to a name you brought up, uh, who played with us for quite some time, is Drupal Cabrera. You think he can play a full season as a starter? I think probably not. I don't think he's going to give you one hundred fifty games, one hundred forty games. Right. But I think you, if you could, you know, get somebody to to share the job with him, I think uh, you know maybe. Uh, um, uh, Freeman, you know, maybe he, he could platoon with Freeman. His, his dribble's a switch hitter. Freeman's a lefty. Maybe he got some kind of platoon situation. A guy like Freeman. There are guys like that on a lot of teams that you have 
tough guys to deal with. You know he's not going to give you any trouble. He's going to be so grateful that he's in the big leagues. Yeah, right? I mean, this guy's, what, 30, 31, 32? Yeah. This, that last year was his first full season in the that's big hard leagues. To believe. I mean, he's, he stuck it out. Yeah, he bounced around. I mean, yeah. and uh, that's tough. And uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, utility infielders never give you any trouble. <laughs> never. <laughs> no, <laughs> or they're they always shouldn't. the nicest guy in the team. <laughs> right. If you want stories, that's the, that's the guy you go to. Anonymous sources. Uh, what about the pitching? If you were going to open, if the opening day was tomorrow, who's your five starters? Well, okay, I, I'm going with Kluber. If, if, if in a perfect world, yeah. Kluber, Carrasco, Bieber, uh, Clevenger, and probably uh, Plutko. I, I, Plutko's out of options, and I think you, you, you're not going to hurt yourself if you give Savali and Plesek a little more time at AAA. When you think about it, those guys came up and they gave you they gave you quality pitching from from young guys like that. I mean, if you bring up two or three as the Indians did, you hope one of them pans out. Yeah, all three of them for the most part did exactly what they were asked to do. And you know, Kluber said something along those lines when he, he had watched these guys and he goes, "It's one thing to be called up and you know get thrown into the fire and start. It's another thing to get called up." Start and keep your team and give your team a chance to win. Sure, and every one of those guys did. Yeah, three different guys did. Yeah, I mean, you know, Savali comes up and I say, well, there's no way they're getting stuff out of him, and he, he might have been the best of the three. Yeah, you know, Plesac made like 21 starts. You know, that's so, hard to believe. And, and, and I mean, he did a good job. I mean, his ERA was under four. Under you ever, four. You ever see a pickoff move by a right-hander like him? Wow. He's got quick feet, man. He's yeah. like, he's like. Whoosh. I think they had to warn the umpires before each game because otherwise, at, at first oh, it glance, was a or, yeah, at first yeah. glance they were saying, "No, that that couldn't possibly be legal." So, two one six five seven five zero four zero three is the number to call. Paul Hines is with us. He's heading out towards San Diego uh, to uh, check out the owners' meetings that that will be out there. Northeast Factory Direct, three great locations. In addition to the, the website, northeastfactorydirect.com. East and west, as well as to the south. The south is Freeway Drive in Macedonia. You got Lakeland Boulevard in Euclid, and of course uh, the original store, West 140th Street. That's on the west side. No uh, gimmicks, no deceiving blowout sales. Just three huge bare-bone warehouse stores, paying about half the. Well, they're paying about one tenth the price for rent, but you're going to pay uh, half or less for uh, the great uh, furniture items that you're going to find out there, including hot tubs and so much more. Check them out. If you want big ticket items to improve your home and you want to pay half price or less, you got to go to northeastfactorydirect.com. Mention you saw it on more sports and less Levine. Northfield Park is your home for live and simulcast racing throughout the month of uh, December. Live harness racing every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday, all with a post time of 6 p.m. you got special programs all month long and uh, tournaments, and uh, you can win, uh, in addition to money, you can win concert tickets and a whole bunch more at uh, Northfield Park where it's free admission, free parking every day. We'll come on back in a moment. Experience matters. We're going to take a look at, believe it or not, if we're talking about football, we're going to talk about Terry Francona and more with Paul Hoynes. More sports and less Levine continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. It's your basement ready for the holidays. There was moisture in the basement. It ruined the carpeting. The smell was terrible. We didn't feel safe in our own basement, and that's when we called Nature Summer. And with Russell's promise, our true unconditional warranty, you will never have to replace your basement flooring again. For a limited time, get Nature Stone installed now and pay nothing until next year. Payments as low as $99 a month. No interest, no down payment. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. National holidays expert Mary Mary here with a list of holidays you won't want to miss. Get your Ohio Lottery Merry Million Scratch-Offs for National Donut Day, National Have a Party with Your Bear Day, Pickle Day, National Unique Talent Day, Take a Hike Day, and America's favorite, National Jukebox Day. Every day is a reason to celebrate. Grab a Merry Millions and other Ohio Lottery holiday scratch-offs today. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen, for old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget, Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line. 
a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just the mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Time for a uh, How Come Quickie. How come, Hoinsy, it takes two to tango, but you also need two to jitterbug? I have no idea what that means, but sounds funny. <laughs> sounds funny. I like it. 216-575-0403. This portion of More Sports and Less Levine brought to you by Tri-C, where futures begin. Paul Hines uh, covering the Indians since 1983. The amazing thing is all the different jobs you were able to hang on. <laughs> yeah. You might have been fooling. You haven't fooled anybody lately because you're as good as there is in all of baseball, but you probably had to fake your way through a little bit I've early. had to fake my way through a lot of stuff, <laughs> believe me. I hid behind the door. <laughs> all right. Uh, our producer in the back room, Mike Bacon, has a theory. You know how you keep hearing about the Dolans are cheap and all that stuff. His theory is, all right, they may be cheap or they don't have that much money to spend, but they're not stupid. Would you agree with that? I'd agree with that. They, they're smart enough to usually stay out of the baseball end of it. Well, yeah, but not only that, when, they do, when the, the team, the front office, makes a decision, they can say... They don't have to be that good at it and say, well, we didn't have the money to back it up. But they not only don't have the money, they make good baseball deals. Yes, they do. They, you know, they, tra traditionally, they've had a great front office, and everybody that comes in there knows what they're dealing with. They're, they know the right. situation they're dealing with. And, and, and they it, do their job, and then they get offered big jobs with big, right. big and teams. Right, they move on. <laughs> Derek Falvey. And, right. I mean, even Neil Hunnigan, who just got fired with the, uh, with the Pirates. But he was their GM for 12 years. That's hard to believe. Yeah. He was Pittsburgh's Pittsburgh, GM yeah. for th 12 years. All right, so let's take a look at this. Uh, Mike's theory is that the experience matters, and he looks at the uh, history of uh, Terry Francona, who uh, managed the Phillies for four years, and he had a 44% winning ratio, which means he didn't do very well, less than 500. No, he right? did not. Yeah. But somebody thought it was smart enough to keep him around. Look what that resulted in. The Red Sox, two pennants and two World Series championships, and won 57% of his games. Now, I know it's big market. They spend as much as anybody, but you, you still could ruin it with a bad manager. Definitely, and to last that long in in in, uh, in Boston, I mean, it's tough. I mean, Dave Dombrowski, what was there three years? He won one World Series he's championship, gone. and he's gone. He's gone. All right, now you go. Uh, Francona goes on in uh, seven years here in Cleveland. By the way, did you ever believe he'd be here seven years? I did not. I thought he would have moved on. I, I really thought he'd did. be a three or four year man. So he wins a pennant, loses in seven games to the Cubs in, nine, in uh, 06, uh, 16, rather, which was unfortunate. But he had a 56% winning uh, percentage. But again, somebody's going to say, oh, but Detroit and uh, Kansas City, I don't care. A big league game is a big league game. Yeah, I mean, you got to play the teams on the schedule. Right. I mean, I think he's averaged over 90 wins the last four years. So now Mike Bacon is saying, well, Let's consider that against Freddie Kitchens, who, by the way, you, me, and Mike Bacon have uh, had as many uh, games coached as uh, in, in the NFL as Freddie had going in. Unless you had under an no, assumed name. No, I, I, I never got near. No, 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 Do you no. think that helmet is in the background is put on his head for that way for a reason, or do you think that's just a flu? <laughs> I think it's a flu. <laughs> All right, so here's, here's the story on this. Does that mean, based on what happened with Francona, because the, the Indians, if they went, wanted to go cheap, they could have gone, nothing personal against Sandy Alomar, but he, he hadn't managed anywhere in the big leagues at, sure. at that point. Uh, Manny Acta, they went cheap on, and they paid the price for it. Yeah, Manny had managed before, though. He right, managed in Washington. Big, yeah. Yeah. By the way, do you remember when Manny came in for his interview and, and – uh, who was the big league manager who went to J Japan? and Bobby Valentine. Bobby Valentine. Maybe the worst press conference I've ever oh, been my, to. I thought he was high. I don't know. Yeah, well, or, or they said he was jet lagged he, or high. Said he was or jet lagged something. from Japan. He was like the. I got he said, "Hey, Bobby, what makes you think you're you, you deserve to be manager of the Indians? Because I'm Bobby Valentine. What do you think?" <laughs> I, I, I thought something was off with and him. Manny comes in and he listed every guy in single A, double A, triple yeah, A, and Manny what he do with them and all. He was prepared. Manny you got to admit prepared. he was prepared. He was, he was good that way. He 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 knows the game. 
He just kind of lost the locker room. He, he didn't. <laughs> any specific incidents on that? Or? No, I never. I never. Heard, I never saw anything. I just. Uh, I, Little respect. The the players did not relate to him. I think maybe the second or third year it just turned. Wouldn't you think? Do you think the um, Latin players were his harshest critics? I think you know th there was there was some talk. I, I think the Latin players liked him. I think you know there was some talk that he may have favored the Latin players, oh. but I never saw that. I, Manny was great with the re with the media. Yeah, he got he it. He was great with us. He really yeah. was. He, and I I thought I think he. I don't know. It was almost like he, you know, he he's not the kind of guy that's going to go out and argue and, and kick dirt on right. the umpires because they wouldn't change their mind. Yeah, and and he and I think they wanted him to do that. Uh, I think the team felt that sometimes he didn't back them up. Do you ever run across a manager who did it too much? Maybe hot dogged it a little bit. Nothing comes to, to mind. Hargrove. I mean, Corrales was well, Corrales he was, was looking for he was looking for a fight. He's looking for a fight at, at the first baseline. Yeah, and, most, and Dave Stewart gave him one the one time. <laughs> unfortunately for right. Pat, right? But, but yeah, I I thought Pat had a hot temper, yeah. you know. But most of those guys get that out of the way, at least in in the minors, you know. Right. Hard, right. They, but nobody manages in the minors anymore. All right, let me give you a couple of names and who who could be available. Just give me a capsule. When you when you hear the name, what what comes to you? Addison Russell, second base. Uh, White interesting uh, guy. Uh, you know, as he uh, was on, he, you know, got suspended, domestic violence. I think he's got too much baggage for the Indians. Well, he came back for the last half of the. What do you have? Miss eighty-one games. Yes. Yeah. He was a big part of their. Uh, I mean, he was kind of supposed to be Series the shortstop win. of the future yeah. for the Cubs. I see C.J. Crone. See, big power. But interestingly enough, he's been released the, by his last two teams. They're DFA. Tampa Bay got him, and and uh, then the Twins. And he had big, uh, you know, a lot of home runs both years. Kevin Pilar, when it hits me, is what a great defensive player he is. Yeah, uh, he had a really good year in, with the Giants. Hit a bunch of home runs. Uh, I think he, he might have been too pricey for him. Played, you know, it, maybe it slipped a little bit defensively. All right, so then you come up with Cesar Hernandez. Not too many Clevelanders would know much about him. Played with the Phillies, right? Yeah, switch hitter, solid second baseman. I think he's a guy that, that would interest the Indians. You care to take a choice on who you'd like out of the group? Out of that group, I'd take yeah. this guy, Cesar, Cesar, Cesar Hernandez. And yeah. he's only, uh, how old is he? 29 years old. Yeah. That's about right. Yeah, a free agent. I mean, he got not tendered, but, you know, that's... But I, I don't. I think you could probably get him on a one or two year deal. And what, what do you do when you go to to um, uh, San Diego, and you see it on ESPN? The, the guys are all over the lobby, and they, you could see they're they're carrying their uh, microphones and everything. Everybody looking for a scoop. Yeah. Do the scoops come to you, or, or how does that work? <laughs> it's it's changed over the years. It used to be, you know, you used to see scouts and managers and and GMs sometimes, and even in the lobby. But now everybody's kind of entombed in their rooms and so tweeting. You, yeah, and tweeting. So it's a little different now. You've got to you've got to have phone numbers of the agents. You've got to you know be able to get in touch with your guys that you're covering. The you know Ant Antonetti and Chernoff the, and hope Hopefully they return. You know they they get back to you. Tell and me how stories break. Is it is it the agent general? Just in general, now is it the agent who breaks it? Is it the team that or the the team that wants more or the team that is, wants to settle right now? Well, it, it it's interesting. Sometimes, you know, it, it can be all those things. Sometimes I remember I was talking to Tom Giordano, one of the Indian mm -hmm. scouts, one winter. And uh, he told me that the Mets wanted Manny Manny Ramirez. The, the Indians were going to trade Manny, you know. And so I write this big story that that Manny's going to the Mets, and uh, it, it didn't and you, happen. And you needed to fill time anyway, <laughs> yeah. uh, fill space. And so you know, it happens that way. Uh, you know, and it, it depends who you're dealing with too, who who your source is, and what kind of relationship you have with them. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, there was one year uh, where where they made the uh, Joe Carter deal. With um, with uh, San Diego and got Bayerga and, right. and Alomar and uh, you know I had I had some really good sources there and that, and that helped. Did and you and your colleagues say let's make something up here just to see what happens? Yeah, <laughs> but in the Bayerga deal, I was talking to one of the uh, the San Diego writers, Bob Nightingale. Mm -hmm. He was covering the 
the Padres in, and I said, well, and I knew they wanted a second baseman. I knew, and I said, well, who's their best minor league second baseman? And and Nightingale goes, it's uh, it's uh, Bayerga. I said, okay, that's what I'm writing with. That's why, I'm and going it turned with it. out to be right. <laughs> Doesn't happen that often. Though. No, it doesn't. I mean, you it's, fell into it's that changed, one. and I, you know, when they were in Vegas a couple years ago, and they made that 11-player deal, they got, you know, they got Joe Smith and uh, Joe Smith and somebody. I mean, they got a couple guys, but there was three teams, 11 players going to, and this was just when you know all the social media came into into being, and I thought, God. My head was spinning out of that. I was like, I wasn't behind. I was like two days behind on that. I was, <laughs> yeah, you but know, you're always right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. You can be, but uh, it was, uh, it, it really woke me up that the thing had changed. hoinsey has got a rant in about 10 minutes, maybe more than that, 15 <laughs> minutes. I'll, I'll give you a direct okay. countdown when we get back. We'll take a break. Try C, uh, of course, uh, that's the place to go to explore your interest and find a program that puts you on the path to a bright future. Go to try-c.edu for more information. We'll come on back in a moment. More Sports and Les Levine continues exclusively on cleveland.com. As a kid growing up, my dream was to go to college, play baseball, and get a degree. Coming out of high school, I had two choices. I was accepted into a four-year university, but I decided to come to Tri-C after receiving a scholarship. I got my associate's degree at Tri-C. They transferred all my credits straight into Baldwin Wallace, so I started at Baldwin Wallace University as a junior. My name is Tyler Leonard, and I earned my first degree at Tri-C. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter. Here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant, whatever it takes. This portion of uh, More Sports and Less Levine brought to you by uh, Northeast Factory Direct and of this state in history, brought to you by Smiley One Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Hoinsey, 1943, you didn't cover this, but the NFL, Philadelphia Eagles, and Pittsburgh Steelers, their merger dissolved. They uh, were no longer the Pittsburgh Steagles. Did you know that? Really? Yeah, they played in the NFL. I the, did not know until, that. Until uh, 1943. I had no idea. They combined Pittsburgh and uh, Philadelphia. 216-575-0403 is the number, which was the one called by Chuck in Masonry, Ohio. Hello, Chuck. Hey, Les. How hey, you doing? Paul. Hey, Chuck. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Good. Hey, um, Hold on uh, one second. Hold on one second. Know, Paul, do you think that if the Indians had everything was equal, they'd rather have a third baseman than a second baseman with Noah Jones a couple of years away? If they sign a third baseman for a couple of years and put Ramirez at second? Do you think that would be their druthers? Yeah, I think that's one school of thought. I, I don't think they're tied into uh, any one thing. I think that's because, you know, they have some flexibility with Ramirez. But, you know, definitely that's that's one of the things they're considering. Hey, Chuck, yes. pitch, pitchers and catchers report in 67 days. Les, you know I call you in the middle of winter and always talk baseball. So that, that's uh, <laughs> beauty to my ears, you know, music to my ears. Yeah. Uh, Couple other things, Paul. Um, how long before uh, Bradley Zimmer and Tristan McKenzie go from prospect to suspect? Oh, uh, that's a that's a great question. Uh, you know, McKenzie just got put on a forty man for the first time. Uh, he hasn't been healthy the last two years, so I think he's got a little more, you know, rope than uh, than Zimmer. Zimmer, uh, you know, just had a tough goal with his uh, shoulder surgery. 
uh, in 2018. He hasn't really come back from it yet. Uh, I mean, he is back, but we haven't seen him play on a consistent basis. He decided not to go to winter ball. I think the Indians would have preferred him to play winter ball this year. Yeah, don't you think he needed a rest from it? And yeah, But he thought he needed a rest. Yeah. He thought he'd, you know, he'd rehabbed and rehabbed, and uh, he just thought he needed a, a you know, a, a normal off season. So we'll see. But you know, Zimmer, you know, all you know, we've seen him. You've seen him. You've seen him play great defense. He can run. But the question is, will he hit? And will he ever hit? Well, I think the bigger question, as you just alluded to, is will he ever take? You know, and it's the same thing with McKenzie. It's they got to get him on the field first to, to see whether he can whether he can ever hit. And Ma hold on, McKenzie. He used to be very, very, th extremely thin. He's still thin. He's, he, still, he's still thin, but it looks like he put some weight on. Uh, well, he's 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 rehabbing now in in uh, in in Goodyear, uh, but he's still he's six five. He's still like one seventy, and you know plus. But you know, if you look at his stuff, I mean, his strikeouts to innings pitched are great. All he's got he's got to stay healthy though, and I don't know maybe maybe he's not a starter. Maybe maybe they move him, you know, to the road what, what to about, the bullpen. What about Aikens? I think Aikens is done. He hasn't Ooh. pitched in two years. I mean, and what did he sign for? He signed for over, over two two point five million. See, a lot of people, they they complain about the Dolans or any owners. Look what they have to do that you don't see produce on the field. Yeah, I, I shouldn't say he's done, but the guy he pitched Looks two like thirds it. of an inning in in in, in at tr at Class A Lake County this year, and that's all he did. So they just don't know about him. They don't know if he's gonna you know be, if he's gonna ever re. The thing is, he hasn't recovered his velocity. Chuck, anything else? Yeah, uh, real quick, uh, Paul, do you know how many RBIs as Drupal Cabrera had last year? I think he had like 60, 50, to, between, about 60. You know, he had 30 about more. Right. Add 30 more. He had, oh, really? 90, he, huh? He had 90 RBIs between really? both teams. No and kidding. Would you take Kipnis back at half the salary? Wow. Oh, boy. Well, he's not going to get the money he wants elsewhere. No, I mean... Well, you know, half his salary, that'd be $8 million. I'm not taking Kipnis <laughs> back at $8 million. Would you take him at 4 I'd take him at 4 yeah. He may not have any other choices. He may not have a choice. I agree, I agree, but I didn't know hey, you know what you know what? Much or not, so. I think Hoinsey would agree with this. I think Hoinsey would agree that in that case that we're talking about, if Kip, Kipnis had to get $4 million from somewhere else, he wouldn't like it, but he would take it. If he takes it from the same team he came from, he may not like it very much. Yeah, you're right. That, uh, you're right. Yeah, that's One that's a good point. point. Hey, do you guys remember? You talked about my Eric and Alomar. You remember who the immortal third person in that trade that we got for Chris, for Joe Carter was? Chris James. There you go. The Seven pony. RBIs in the one game. Was, the pony. No nine there. RBIs in one game. I think right? it was nine. Yeah. Yeah. Him and yeah. him and Chisinau hold the record. Yeah. All right, gotta go, Chuck. Good to hear from you. Two one six five. Two of five seven five zero four zero three Northeast Factory Direct, three great locations plus the website northeastfactorydirect.com. You're going to save a lot of money. Just go, just go to the website if nothing else. I'd like you to stop into the store and tell them you heard about it on More Sports and Less Levine. But if you go to the uh, to uh, Northeast Factory Direct, you'll uh, you'll get exactly what you need right there. They've got three huge uh, bare bone warehouses. North uh, Northeast Warehouse. They got them. Isn't that funny? They get it's Northeast, but they got them East, West, and South. Huh, very directional here. Uh, Northeast Factory Direct, you're going to save a lot of money. 300 sets right now of, of, uh, of uh, foam mattresses right now for $5.99. 50 sofas uh, right in stock right now at about $3.99. And solid wood bunk sets, $2.99, all at northeastfactoryDirect.com. Sokolowski's University Inn. I was there today, and, uh, earlier than usual, if you're coming by to have lunch with me and buy it for me, I'm sorry <laughs> I missed the opportunity. But they were telling me about the uh, big Sunday, December 15th, 3 o'clock, it's the Sokolowski's Holiday Wine Test Tasting uh, event, and it's uh, one of the great events in, in food dumb here uh, in Northeastern Ohio. Of course, uh, you know that uh, the food and wine uh, people, the, uh, the people who run, uh, run that business nationally, they have named uh, Mike and Bernie Sokolowski's University Inn as the second best, um, second best cafeteria style play restaurant in the country. Wow. I don't know who number one is, but number two is pretty good. You're not kidding. Mike Definitely. and Bernie Sokolowski's University Inn, the winner of the James Beard Foundation Award just four years ago. We'll come on back in a moment. Hoinsey's rant coming up very soon. More sports and less Levine, exclusively on Cleveland.com. 
Get your garage ready for the holidays. We had some cracks in the floor. We needed to enhance the beauty of it. That's when we called Nature Stone. Nature Stone corrects uneven concrete, so you don't have to worry about tripping or slipping. And with Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty, you will never have to replace your garage floor again. For a limited time, get Nature Stone installed now and pay nothing until next year. Payments as low as $99 a month. No interest, no down payment. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line. A long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Presque Downton Casino now has sports betting. Use one of the 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet. Then watch your favorite games on our new HD televisions or visit our new sportsbook area. Only at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. You know, me and Jarvis and uh, a friend of his, or brother of his, really T Jack, we grew up with him. Um, we used to always talk about this little package and having the two running backs and this and it just kind of and we watched it like happen and then there's two backs in there two wides and, and this package was very tough for teams to defend um so that's something that could be very beneficial in the future um and hopefully that we could use that a little more and just having kareem back seeing you know he fought through kind of similar what i'm going through and he came back after missing however much he said 245 days of playing football um, and he's excited, and, and having him back there adds a whole new dimension, dynamic um, to the offense. So um, he's a phenomenal talent, and you know, we, I think that could be something very special. I, always, I tell you all the time, 2020 is going to be my year. Um, so I, I'm not really worried about you know so much what's going to happen in the future, but my mindset for next year is no matter what is going on, um, nothing's going to be in my way, uh, and that's just how I feel, and, and that's the goal. And sit here and write it down now, and people could talk about it, say whatever they want, but we'll see when when it happens next year. Uh, so, honestly, any any what what's the future hold? Um, I don't know that. I don't know the answers um, for that. You know, right now I'm just taking it a day at a time, trying to finish the season healthy, um, trying to trying to win these last four games and see what happens. Lindsey, I don't know what I expected from him, but off the field. I didn't get it. Um, he didn't get. He didn't cause any trouble. No. It just followed him around. Yeah. <laughs> I, what? What? The watch and the visor and yeah. the shoes. I mean, just yeah, but it's catch not the ball. bad stuff. No, just it's not dumb it's not, stuff. Yeah, it's not malicious. Unbelievable. Let's go to BP, who's in Pepper Pike. Find out what's on his mind. Hello, BP. Hello, guys. How are you doing tonight? All right. How about you? Good. Very good. Good. I'm looking forward to hearing Hoinsey's rant. Who isn't? Oh, my is he, God. Is he I'm, allowed to rant about football, or is he only exclusive to baseball? Heinze can touch them all time. He can, you name it, he can do it. He has carte blanche here, and American Express, for that matter. Yeah, I can't. Hopefully his rant is about the Browns, because they need to be uh, ranted upon. Well, hold they, on. Let me get an exclusive. What's, what's it about? A little of everything? It's, yeah, a little of everything. All right, it's a potpourri. <laughs> okay, well, I'll obviously listen very hard to his uh, great rant, which is always very entertaining. Right. Um, I did want to mention, um, you guys, you're you not going to be on the air tomorrow, Les, so at least on this uh, this network. So uh, I I'm going to wake up in the I'm going to which... wake up in the morning and, and see that I got to remind myself I'll be doing 92.3 The Fan from 10 until 2. If you want to call me and remind me, that's okay. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll give you a wake up call. Okay. 
But uh, are you guys ever – I heard one of your previous shows you were talking about the Cavs, that you don't – have you not really talked about the Cavs yet this season, or are you just going to wait until next year? I, I got news for you. I, they're not watchable to me. My, yeah. you, you agree with me, by yeah, the way? I mean, what, they, they won, what, split the first four games, yeah. and then they've been struggling ever since. They've won yeah, the same amount as the Browns. I'm sorry, five the wins. Browns, I, obviously, they're seven-and-a-half-point favorites. I think they'll beat Cincinnati. I think it's been such a crazy season. I actually think they're going to win. They'll beat Cincinnati this week. They'll go to Arizona and beat Arizona. And I think that Baltimore game is going to mean something. So To who? You know, I mean, hey, I'm not giving up yet. You know, you think they'll seven. still be alive by the I time they play Baltimore? Wait, I'm sorry. I think you they'll think... still be alive when okay. they play Baltimore. Yeah, yes, that's I what do. I said. All right, all right, BP. We got to go to move in the new set uh, that we've got here. There's a truck outside uh, ready for Hoinsey's rant. <laughs> Thanks. Weekend. Thank you very much. I will be on 92.3 The Fan with Andy Baskin tomorrow from uh, 10 until 2. Hope you uh, will join us uh, for that. Northfield Park is your home for live and simulcast racing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday. But the post time is 6 p.m. But they're open early every day at around noon for simulcast action all over the world at all the great tracks. And uh, that's uh, a lot of stuff happening in the month of December. We'll tell you more about that when we get back on uh, Monday. By the way, Dan Lobby will be here on Monday covering the Cleveland Browns. And we'll find out what he thinks after the Browns uh, take on, who do they have this week? Bengals, right? The Bengals. Got to beat them. Four games left, two of them against the Bengals. We'll take a break. We'll come on back to Paul Hoyne's classic rant. Is it a classic? Yeah. We'll be the judge. <laughs> yeah. Before we do that, we'll get to some quickies. More sports and less. Levine continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. It's your basement ready for the holidays. We had a horrible storm that flooded our basement. We had to take out that nasty, moldy carpet. And we never want to have to go through that again. That's when we called Nature Stone. And with Russell's promise, our true unconditional warranty, you will never have to replace your basement flooring again. For a limited time, get Nature Stone installed now and pay nothing until next year. Payments as low as $99 a month. No interest, no down payment. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen, for old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget, Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to OhioLottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students kindergarten through 12th grade can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. Here we go. Uh, this date in Les Levine history, December 5th, 1969. The Cavaliers would begin in the 70-71 season. A contest was held to name the team. Les entered the team, the Cleveland Heights. H-I-T-E-S. He lost by a lot. I think that's because the people who were running the team didn't know that there was a little pun intended. They were saying, right. this guy doesn't know how to spell. <laughs> All right, uh, time for some how come quickies. We'll make them quick. This guy, Big Ed, is now grading his own from last night. Oh, all right. He says they were so-so last night. Hopefully this will make up for it. How come when I asked my brother if he misses his wife's cooking, he said, as often as I can? <laughs> Give it a number. Yeah, I'd say that's a 5.8. 5.8. How come when I asked my good friend what he did before he got married, he said, anything I wanted to? <laughs> that's a 6. 6.5. Six, wow. Uh, this from John and Ashtabula. How come banks have branches if money doesn't grow on trees? That's pretty good. That's that's. You got to think what, about that. What do one. you got? I got like a seven point two. Seven point two is big. Uh, Mr. Gullible, how come the best player to be traded during next week's winter meetings is Toby named later? Ooh. To be named later. I like How come that. Matt Stairs had an up and down career? <laughs> God, that like combination. You yeah, got like nine point eight on that yeah, one. Nine point yeah. eight. John Patrick, how come Hooten almost always leads to hollering? 
I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Not bad. Three, five, four, four, eight. It's consistent. He's like Joe DiMaggio. He just keeps getting hits. The the streak continues. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the moment we've all been waiting for, because Hoynesy won't be here the next next week, right? For sure. And we don't know about the following week. Hopefully, he'll be here. But until then, to keep the weather warm and our hearts warm, here's a Paul Hoynes rant. <laughs> Les, it's all yours. You know, Les, you know, I, my wife has been watching these Hallmark movies, Hallmark Christmas movies. They, she's been watching them since three weeks, three weeks before Thanksgiving. I mean, and now I'm hooked. You know, it's, I, I, I can't, you know, I keep watching. And, you know, the plot is always the same. It, it goes like girl slash boy from big city meets girl slash boy from small town in a small town like that looks like Santa Claus's North Pole Village. Then girl, boy falls in, they fall in love, girl falls in love with boy, they break up, they get back together, and then the whole town gathers for a Christmas pageant, and then Santa Claus comes out and plugs, a, plugs in this huge Christmas tree and it lights up and everybody cheers and everybody sings Silent Night, then you fade to black and you're supposed to have visions of sugar plums dancing in your head. Les, this is ruining my Christmas spirit. I, I, I am, I, you know, everybody on our street already has their lights up. I mean, you know, I'm saying, I wait, I, when I put my lights up in our house, I wait till the first huge snowstorm of the season. Then, that's when I do it, when the wind is howling like 80 miles an hour. But, you know, let's, this, has, this did make me think about our Cleveland sports teams. You know, it, 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 look, look, you know, you take the Indians. You fell in love with the Indians in 1995. First World Series in, in 41 years. They lost, but okay. You hang in there with them. They get back in 1997. They go to Game 7 of the World Series and lose an extra innings to the Marlins. But still, you hang in there with them. You, you know, you love that team. Then finally, you hang in there, you hang in there. They get back in, 19, in, in 2016. They get back there again to the World Series. And they lose again an in extra innings in Game 7. This time to the Cubs. Who does that? <laughs> then, you, then you go to the Browns. You go to the Browns. You know, you fall when you're a kid. You fall in love with the Browns in 1964. Ryan to Ryan to uh, uh, Gary Collins. They win the world. They win the NFL championship. They beat the Colts. And then what you do? Then you you wait and you wait. And you wait, and you wait some more. You wait past Red Right 88, the drive, the fumble, the move, and Johnny Manziel. And what do you get in return? What do you get in return for all that investment? Nothing, nothing. Then, you, okay, you, then you go to the Cavs. The Cavs, you fell in love with the Cavs when Fitch threw the, threw the chair across the, the, the floor and, and, and John Warren scored the wrong way basket. And then there was a miracle in Richfield and Jim Jones broke his foot. And you love those teams. And finally, finally, after all that love that you put out toward one team, they return it. They return it by winning a championship in 2015 or 2016. And then, then, they go to the finals the last, the next two years and lose. And then their best player packs up and goes to the West Coast. Les, Les, you know, this is one title in 52 years. One title in 52 years. That, you know, I'm not walking around saying ho, ho, ho. I don't feel jolly. You know, but, you know, I'm, I'm not ready to, to do a Scrooge. I'm not saying Christmas, bah, humbug. No, I'm not ready to do that. I mean, we still got time. We still got time. I still, still get that Christmas spirit back. But I'm telling you, Les, if one of Santa's elves comes up to me and gives me a plug to plug in the Christmas tree at some town square, they're not going to like what I tell them where to put that plug. I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> you had me at, you, at what turns out to be the first minute of it. You could have stopped right there, and it was great. <laughs> Sensational. Sensational. I, I'm, I'm speechless. <laughs> you know, one, one championship in what, in 52 years, yeah. seasons? And they got the wrong team to have it. Yeah, yeah the one. <laughs> right? Most of us would have rather had the Indians or the Browns. Right? That's right, yeah. That, I mean, that was, but it's, jeez. Wow. How long do you work on that one? <laughs> I mean, that's going into the Rant Hall of Fame. Unbelievable. Thanks to Paul Hines. Great job. Sa travel safe. You'll come back uh, with us when you get back from yeah. the winter meetings. Bring, bring a 
I don't know, make $20 a million dollar a guy, a year guy? The, the thing with Gabe Paul, he would, he would always make a big deal at the winter meetings. Right. You know, to spur ticket sales. And now they don't feel that there's not that urgent no. need to do it. No. All right, that'll do it for us. Great job by Hoinsey. We'll see you, uh, I'll see you in the morning. How can you make an appearance on radio? You can't, you can't see it. I'll be there from 10 until uh, 2 tomorrow with Andy Baskin, and uh, we'll be back. Uh, you got uh, Dave Bacon with the weekend winners. Uh, that's uh, tomorrow night, Dennis Mandeloff on that one. I'll see you on Monday night with Dan Lavey of The Plain Dealer and Cleveland.com of all the shows I've ever done. This was the most recent.